Webhooks are by far one of the most powerful thing within automation, yet most people still have no idea how they work. If you don't know who I am, my name is Michele and over the past 12 months, I've helped over 40 businesses implement AI and automation and I started with no technical knowledge. So today I'm walking you through exactly what a webhook is, how you can use it in real life and how you can set it up within your own and it's end. So by the end of the video, you'll be able to use it within your own automations even if you've never touched it before. So let's dive in. So what a webhook is, is essentially a URL that allows us to get notified when something changes within an app. So think of it as someone coming into your house and ringing your doorbell. As soon as they ring your doorbell, you instantly get notified, right? And uh, we usually refer to this as an instant trigger. That's exactly what a webhook is. As soon as something happens, we instantly get notified in the webhook. Now the business use case to this could be someone filling out a form. So as soon as the user fills out a form, whether it's in the website or something else, we instantly get notified. So the webhook receives the data, meaning receives the responses from the form and then starts the automation, which is the one right here. All right, so let's jump onto NN right here real quick and we can add the first step. So adding the first step, just asking us, what is the trigger? What is a thing that starts the automation? As I mentioned, when someone fills out the form, the first step will be the webhook because that's the thing that allows us to actually start the automation. Now, the webhook can be found here. So on a webhook call, we can obviously trigger manually an app event on a schedule and form submission. We can do a bunch of stuff but the webhook itself is this one and it runs the flow on receiving an HTTP request. Now HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, very fancy way of saying that data is passed from one app to another when we get notified, right? So when we tap on here, we get introduced to this page right here. On the left-hand side is basically pulling in from the webhook, so it's listening for new events. So when we press this button, it now the webhook itself, it's listening for notifications coming from some server, some sort of server. So let's stop listening. And in the middle, this is the configuration and on the right hand side is the output. So when we get notified, the notification will show up here. So right here, the first thing that we see is the difference between a test URL and a production URL. Now this is quite misunderstood between uh, what they are, but a test URL, so if you look at the, the actual thing, the actual URL in this case, it says test, but production doesn't have test. Now, when you want to deploy, which means that when you want to activate your automation, you typically want to uh, use the production URL. So that's the main use case for this, but you can use the test when you test and production is again, when you wanna activate your automation. Now, right here, you can see that you have a URL. So again, the webhook itself is URL that's accessible to anyone. It's literally, it, it goes on the web. It's just a normal link that you can use for anything that you do. So if I press here, I can usually copy it and I can go to, to, to Google and actually search it. But again, this is a thing that allows us to actually get notified when something happens. And we also get this, this long string. So this is the, the unique part, which is 38, 26, BB, 2D, 9056 and this is the path this is what we call a path now the path can be changed to something else like hello right hello Michele, whatever it is or we typically want to have a long string it doesn't really matter but again this can be this can vary this can change right and it doesn't really matter what you put here now when it comes to the webhook itself we have different types of method now when you want to get notified from a server you typically want to use one of these different http methods so the http method can be a get which is getting information, head, patch, post, put, and delete. Really the only ones that I've actually used after building hundreds of automation is get and post. So a server could say, hey, I'm sending you the notification, but it needs to be a put request or a post request or a get request, right? So this is the thing that you put here. The path again, I explained, which is the last part of the webhook. Authentication is basically saying, do you want to add a password? So only you, only the people who know the username and password can actually access it. You can use it, but I don't really use basic auth and header auth or JSON webhook token auth. It doesn't really matter, like the difference between that doesn't really matter, but just know that they're used as a way for us to say, hey, don't breach across this point, you need to have a password to actually use it. So that's what we use authentication for, but typically I would have it as none. And then for the response we have immediately, we have when last node finishes. So immediately just means like when this happens, immediately send the data here. We can have when last node finishes, return the data when the last node, which means that the last step of the execution is finished, the last step of the automation and then it sends the data back. And we can use a respond to webhook node, which I'll show you in just a second, and then streaming as well, which we don't really use, uh, so don't worry about it too much. And then we have different options. So for options, I would usually have the raw body, so in case we need it. But for most of the times, because we're getting notified, because we're getting something, we wouldn't use any options, but you can have the option to basically have some different options here that you can use for the different types of requests that you're getting. But typically we wouldn't put anything here. So with that being said, if you go here to webhook, when I spoke about the respond to the webhook, we also get a webhook response, respond to the webhook. So what this means is that when we get notified from the server, we can actually give it a response back to the server. So let me show you what I mean. So because this is accessible on the internet, I can copy this, I can listen for the test event. And let me just go like here 
And then I can see that now the message says workflow has started. So if I go back here, I can see that on here, I get a bunch of output. So I get the user agent Mozilla, which is basically telling everything about my browser, a bunch of Cody stuff that you don't have to worry about, but just know that because we opened it on the browser, it's basically giving us a bunch of information that we then can use for the automation. So let me show you exactly what I mean by a response to webhooks. So let's say we add this here and I go in here and I say, uh, all incoming items. So we're basically saying, Hey, I'm going to give you back everything that you gave me. So if I execute this workflow, I think I have to change this to, yeah, you respond to webhook as well, because this is the response execute the workflow. And now I go here, I can see that I get a bunch of different texts. So this is exactly what sends to us, but because we're sending it back, we get everything here. So that's why it's sending us everything back. All right. So you understand what a webhook is now. You understand sort of the different things, the different settings. Let's actually put it to work and see how it actually works in a business case scenario. Uh, if I go here, let me just put it in production mode and let me copy this. Um, the pr workflow that we're going to basically make is starting from a type form, which is someone filling out a form. And then we can add it to, let's say a Google sheet, and then we can send an email back to the person that filled out the form. So let me go to type form. So this right here is the type form that we're going to use for this test right here. It all starts with full name, email, and what are you looking for? Very, very simple. You can obviously add more details like company name, budget, whatever it is that you have. Uh, but let's start here. I want to show you exactly when we fill out this form, how does it send the information to NNN? So let me go to workflows. Let me go to webhooks right here. So you can connect with any app to send responses or trigger actions, which is exactly what we want. We want to add a webhook, which will take us to this page. We can add a webhook. And then here is where we go inside and we actually, what is it? Production URL. Let's copy this and let's put it into here. And we can save the webhook. Now, once this is done, we can, we typically want to send a test request to make sure that it does work. So let me go here. I go inside and listen for test events. I can send a test request and now it's giving me an error. So let's see why it gives me an error. So below on the response, we can see the workflow must be active for a production URL to run successfully. You can activate the workflow using toggle. Okay. So this is what I meant before. So if you go here, I just pasted the production URL. Let's do the test URL because again, the production URL only works when you activate the automation. So let's do test URL. Let me copy this. Let me go here. Let me replace webhook and now we can test it again so let me listen for event and i can test the request in this case it's giving me another error so let's see the response and now it's telling me the webhook is not registered for post request did you mean to make a get request so now this is goes back to the fundamental where i told you some servers ask us to do a different request so in this case for the http they say, Hey, this is not set up to do a post request. So all we have to do is set up to the, to do a post request in this case. And then we can try again, go here and then send a test request. And now it should be successful, right? 200, which means it's all good. The workflow has started. And if I go back to NNN, I can see that we have the output, which is successful, right? Which is everything. Okay, cool. Now, now that we know that this works and we know that we get a request whenever this is post and is test just to test until we set it to active. We can then fill out the form and see the data that we get. Go here, listen for events, go back to type form, and then I can activate this because we want this to be on every single time. I can copy the link to the type form and then I can start filling it out. So let me do Michele Torti, my name or my email. And what are you looking for? I want to learn automations and I can press submit. And now this information will be sent to NNN right here with a different output. So we have headers, which is just a bunch of fancy stuff that you want to look at. But then when we actually care about is not the body, but the responses, where is it? Uh, the answers. So Mikhail Torti, my name, the email is this and the text, the third one is this. So these are the ones that we're going to use for the next steps. The form submitted, it sends the data to the webhook. It's like, Hey, we have this data. Someone just submitted the form. Now use it for whatever you want to use. Here's a notification. Okay. Once we have this, what we can do now is we can add it to our Google sheet. So let's make a Google sheet right now. Let's name it new form request. Let's do full name. Just the, the variables that we had email. Uh, once let's just do once. So let's connect this to end end. So I go here, I can press plus, I can go go to sheets. And then what I need to do is append a row and a sheet. 
connect it. All you have to do is go here, send it with Google. Very, very simple. And then I can do she within a document, append a row, which means add a row. And a document will be new form request. There we go, the first one. And then a sheet will be one. We want to map each column manually because we want to do this manually. And then the full name will be the one here. Where is it? There we go. Text. Because this is the text that we got. And you know this because this is the answers, right? You wouldn't put it here if it wasn't the answers. And then email would be the one here. So you just drag it across. And once will be the last thing, which is I want to learn automations. So it's always good to test because when you go here, how would you know this is the answers, right? I mean, it says answers right here, but it's much better if you test to get actual answers that you know you put. So you can just map them here. And this is all good. So I can just execute step, which means I'm just testing it. This is executing. So if I go here to the sheet, I can see that this is already added. So let me add this to bold. And then I know this works. So I can go to the last step, which is sending an email. So email in this case will be Gmail. Uh, create a message, not send an email. Yeah, send a message. And all I have to do to connect to Gmail to, to end it end is go here, send them to Google. Very, very simple, like Google Sheets. And then here I have to put message send because we're sending the message. And in this case, who are we sending the email to? We can either pull it from here or we can pull it from the actual form itself, which is the email, right? I can put it here. The subject line will be thanks for filling out the form. Then it's asking us for the email type. Now HTML is just a way that we make our emails fancy. We can leave this as text because we don't need to use HTML. And we can go here, full screen. And then here I can say, hey, I can go down to my name. So, hey, Michele. And obviously, ideally, we want to have just the first name and that goes into formulas. I don't want to get into this uh, just for this video because it's a bit more complex. But I can say, hey, Michele, just saw our team will get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks. All right, cool. So we said, hey, webhook name, which is a variable that we're pulling in from the form. Because again, we're using dynamic variables. It changes every single time. We're also saying, hey, what do you want? Who do you want to send an email to? And that's about it for the steps. So let me test it. Okay, I just realized that it was actually wrong. I put an extra O, so I, I actually didn't send the email. Um, but you should be getting the email when you send it through. Uh, I just had to put one O less, but that's how, that's usually how it works. You just send it and you get this output right here. So let's test it from the start until the end. Let's execute the workflow and let's do a new form. So let's refresh. Let me go here and say, James Lowe. Let me do my actual email without the extra O. Automations for lead generation. Submit. We go here. It's talking to Google Sheets to actually add it, but we got the, the output here. So if I go here, I can see that the answers in this case was James Lowe, was email, and then it was automations for lead generation, which rhymes. Uh, and then we go to Google Sheet, which appends around the sheet, which means that it added. So if I go here, I can see that James Lowe was added. And obviously this would be a project management tool. It could be a CRM, whatever it have. Um, but we added it here. So just so you can keep track of all the different requests that you're having. And lastly, we have the email, which was sent this time with the right email. <laughs> so if I go to my email right here, I can see that I have an email from Michele, which says, hey, James Lowe, just so you filled out the form on the website, our team will get back to you as soon as possible. Of course, you want to add more. And then it actually sends this as well, which is which we don't want. So all we have to do is go here and then we can go to append and an attribution. We can turn this off so that whenever it sends us an email, it doesn't say this part, which we don't want. All right, so that right there is basically how you use webhooks on NNN. I wanna quickly show you how it looks like on a different platform, which is make.com. So if I go to make.com, I can log in. This is just another automation platform like NNN. It's just between NNN, Zapier and, um, and make.com. Make.com, it's, it's fairly easier to, to get started with. But if I go here, I can see that to add the webhook to make.com, all you have to do is go here and there's literally webhooks here and you can create a custom webhook, which is the same. So create a webhook, name it whatever you want. So Michele test, this would be the URL that we had before. So in NNN, it will be this, this URL right here. In make.com, it will be this. They all have their own in, like internal different names. In this case, it's make.com. And for NNN, it's NNN.cloud, right? So they have their own unique sort of way that they name their, um, their webhooks. But on a high level, this is very, very, this is literally pretty much the same. Like it has the same functionality. All the webhooks are pretty much the same. It's just that the way they look is different because of the way that, um, that this is set up. Press save and this much. I don't want to get into make.com because that's more of a different video, but I just wanted to show you how it looks like to actually make a webhook on a different platform. 
And lastly, I want to show you how to send a data point from not from a form, but from another scenario to a webhook, right? If I go to another scenario right here, so let me go out, let me go here. Let me create a new workflow. And now, because we, I spoke about HTTP at the start, but in order for me to have a workflow and then send the information from my workflow to the next workflow through a webhook, uh, I can then actually use a HTTP request. So let me show you exactly what I mean. It will look, it will actually be much more clear when I actually run this. Uh, but all I have to do is copy this and let me take this out. So I copy the webhook that I need. And now we will get data from the, uh, from the previous workflow. So if I execute the workflow here, I can go here and then I can send the URL, which would be basically saying, hey, I'm sending the data to you, right? And the webhook is getting notified. In this case, the method would always be post just because we're posting information because that's sending information from one place to another. Authentication is zero. And then we can also send a body. The body will be anything that you want it to do. So you can say uh, full name. So I should just do camel case. Full name, Michele. For camel case, you just, just want the capital letters to be this. So this one here will send the information with it. So if I execute this step, first of all, I have to run this. Right, it's, already, it's already running, right? And now it's waiting for this. So if I execute the step now, it will send the information. And I can see that we have in the body right here, we have full name, Michele. So imagine if you had a workflow right here, which could send different variables, so different things from one workflow to another. So you can split it up and then you have all the different workflows talking to each other because you have webhooks and because you have HTTP requests. This is a whole nother topic in itself, but I wanted to show you the overall sort of arcing thing of what a webhook is, how it can be used in a business sense, how it can be used or what the fundamentals are and how everything works together, how you can link it from automation to automation as well. So that right there is how you can use webhooks within your own Enit and workflows. I showed you exactly what it is. So the fundamentals, I showed you how you can set it up in Enit N, what the different functionalities are. And then I showed you how do we connect a scenario to another through an HTTP request and then getting information to a webhook. And these are really powerful because they allow an app to speak to another app. And that's what automation is really about, which is exactly why we use webhooks in a lot of the automations that we build for our clients to make sure things actually talk to each other because that's what automation is. And now that you know how to set up a webhook and you want to level up your end and game, then check out this video on the screen because I take you through everything that you need to know about building your first AI agent on end and from scratch with no technical knowledge required. With that being said, I hope you found value and I'll see you in the next one.